Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tochi. You guys, today's video is very important. We'll be comparing living in England, Northern Ireland and Scotland. If you don't know, the UK is divided into four countries, Wales, Northern Ireland, Scotland and England. We're here to talk about accommodation, feeding, home bills, how safe it is for families and children, job opportunities in this country, so that if you're thinking of moving to any of these countries, then we can help you make a decision. And I have two beautiful ladies here they would introduce them themselves and then we'll dive right into the video hello Tochi's lo lover thank you for having me Tochi my name is Gloria Otiko and I'm honored to be here you know I live in the favorite part of the UK Scotland precisely so yes <laughs> welcome I'm <and> please enjoy <laughs> hi guys um my name is Lanel um I'm a nurse here in the UK as well, and I'm happy to be here. And I live in Northern Ireland, so I'm representing Northern Ireland in this video. Yay. So guys, you know my name already. I'm representing England in this video. So let the yes. battles begin. Right, so let's start with accommodation, which is the very important one. It's the most important because everyone needs a roof over their heads, right? Um, Gloria, how much do you pay for accommodation and what kind of house do you live? Yes, uh, you know, talking about accommodation is going to depend on the size of the family. I'm a family of five, so that's a big part. Um, and so we, and I'm also renting, so I'm a bit different from both of you. Uh, I'm a family of five, so I'm renting a three bedroom house and it's 660, not in the city, but in a big town in Scotland. Right. Nadia, what about you? So for us, um, we live in our own home, a um, family of three. It's a three bedroom house in the, in the city, in the city, like very close to the city centre. And for our mortgage, we're paying 650. And that is even our decision. We are not supposed to pay standard. We are supposed to be like 525. So we are just paying more so that we can finish paying it faster. So we pay 650 thereabouts for our mortgage. And then for, um, you can get, um, you can get like a three bedroom house as well for rent for the same price in the city as well so yeah it's yeah both ways all right for me we live in a house as well and we pay 530 pounds it's a three bed house and yeah like nanel mentioned it's just peculiar to our situation but for those renting here um for three bed house here it should be around 800 900 pounds right now where we're living before was a two-bed house when we're renting and it was for 600 pounds but right now it has increased so houses the price of houses here have really gone up so yeah okay so let's move over to home bills now since we're talking about accommodation so um gloria let's hear what you're paying monthly so my bills is varies as well depend on the month but basically let's start with council tax uh, in scotland we do pay council tax but that's inclusive of water bill okay so your council tax your refuse your, your water bill and all those stuff and, and currently we are paying about 130 pound per month for council tax and um, then for electricity in before now you know how everything has gone up before now we're paying 72 pound direct debit per month but right now it is 230 pound in the same house the same property um for electricity and gas so that's both together um so every month every month yeah for my wi-fi um i, I pay 25 pound per month for my wi-fi so for Northern Ireland, um, before we bought a house, we used to think that there's no council tax. That is, if you are renting, there's no council tax. But apparently, if you're a homeowner, there is council tax. They don't call it council tax, they call it rates. So um, since it's a new home, there's a lot of paperwork to be done. So we haven't actually gotten a house in the system yet. So we haven't actually started paying. I don't want to give the wrong this, but I hear that um, it is not as much as the other parts of the UK. So our electricity and our gas and... Um, wi-fi i would say that in all electricity and gas let's say around 200 pound but it's not fixed it's based on how much you used in that particular you, yeah and then there's the wi-fi and then there's um um phone bill so averagely i'll say 250 per month all right um so for me 
for home bills for council tax we pay 166 pounds for and council tax is not about where you live right now okay it's not about location it's just about your council the kind of house you live and all that so yeah for energy that's gas and electricity it depends right during winter we paid a lot like this i think our december and january bill was high it was about 100 and something 160 something of almost 200 pounds but now it's a bit the last month was just about 97 pounds so it's getting lower so um i'll just leave it on the average and i'll say maybe 150 pounds for that for water we pay 35 pounds for our other bills phone bills and um, other subscriptions um wi-fi everything i'll just say 50 pounds for everything so for in total our home bills should be around 300 pounds every month yeah, for us, I forgot to mention, we don't pay for water, it's free, so. Okay. So if you're looking for a place that you'll be paying for water, then you should consider Northern Ireland. Not just water, everything at all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about transportation now, because everybody has to go to work. If you have kids, you have to take your children to school. You basically have to move from one place to the other. So it's very important. Now, Gloria, how much do you spend on transportation every month? Okay, so you look uh, when it comes to I I drive, so it's divided into you know your road tax, your insurance, the fuel. So fuel wise, um, somehow I'm paying about 82, 85 pound a month, a whole month. Like it covers me for my whole one month, all the school runs and everything. That's for the fuel. For the road tax. Um, I pay about nineteen pounds monthly, but it's about one twenty a whole year for me. And then for the car insurance, I currently pay sixty five for this car, um, sixty five pound per month for my car insurance. So that's basically what I spend on transportation every month. So right. for us, so for us as well, my husband and I we share one car. So whoever is going to work that day is the one who uses the car. And any um, the other the other person wherever you are going you have to take the bus or you have to walk. Yeah. The car is busy. Let me say almost every day of the week, and we we pay around 70, 80 um, pound for petrol for fuel. Yes, because our house is not so far from the um, from our workplaces, and so even though we use the car almost every day of the week, we spend around 70, 80 pound. So let me say average seventy five pound on fuel car insurance as well and um, we have the same insurance like he's on that we are on the same insurance and because his um, insurance is fairly new we pay around let's say around the same 75 pound a month for insurance okay and then um for road tax and let me say road tax around 25 pound um a month so that's as for transportation okay and um, so for me am i not really categorizes the way they did because I have a budget and a tracker so I just went transportation and I just took everything there so it's just summed it up to transportation so that's all I'll be saying for, for transportation well because we take our daughter to school every day and so and her school is quite a distance from our house and um, then walk and running around and then we travel once in a while and we love road trips so um, so for transportation, well, everything, insurance, everything, we spend about, I'll say, £200, just about that, every month. It's also good that we add that um, transportation, even if you are in Northern Ireland, you know, just like you described, it will differ based on the proximity to your house, like where you are and then um, how close it is to the places that you frequently visit. So it is very important that once you settle in a particular job, you find a place that's not so far, so that it's like you don't have to waste so much money on transportation because it can be quite expensive, you know. Exactly, because if you're trying to look for a school or looking for a, a, you know, a house, make sure you get it close to your workplace or look for a school close to your house or something like that. Don't do fire away because it's very stressful. So yeah. I actually, I actually checked the proximity of this place to our church and even the African markets because we go there at least once a week. Yeah. All right. So let's move to another very important one, and that is feeding. Everybody must eat, right? So, Gloria, how much do you spend on feeding every month? 
gosh, I can't wait to know yours. Family of five, people. <laughs> you know I'm a family of five, and as you can tell, I like my food. <laughs> so, um, and it's divided as well into African food and Nigeria and uh, the normal grocery, the you know, book yeah. grocery. So, um, I don't do African shopping all the time. That was I was surprised at Nalel that she's able to go to African shop every way because I don't have that luxury. I'm not giving you a point, I'm just saying. <laughs> just because it depends on where you are, we are in Scotland and you know we don't have as much Africans here as you have in other places. That being said, if I'm going to shop for African food, I'll have to like we went last week to Edinburgh and it's about 45 minutes drive away from me. Why, if I will go to Glasgow, it's over an hour. So that is how I get my African food. So when we go, like we buy in bulk. So the last one we went, just because we're buying in bulk and it will take us at least four months, maybe. We like, we're buying like 20 bag of rice kind of shopping. Um, it's over 300, and about 350 was what we spent the last time we went. So that's not going to, you know, be an exact price if you're going every week. So you can divide that into the months, you know what I mean? So that would take us for up to four months, thereabouts maybe. And then the normal grocery, <laughs> because you know, we're family of five and so, nothing less than about 450 in a month. And it also depends. Some, some days I will go to the shop and I will spend 150 in a day. And then some days I will just go to top up with milk, bread, egg, and those little things. And I can spend 20. But when you add them all together... <laughs> so together, you say that? So together, I would say 450 plus about 650. For me, clothing and all those stuff are not my priority. The food is actually my own priority. So I go to the shop and I just walk through all the aisle and pick anything. I don't go with... I don't have a target when I'm shopping for grocery. Yeah, so that is... It depends on your own priority. So that will determine uh, how much you're going to spend. <laughs> Foodie. Foodie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. So for us, we spend a lot of um, money with the African market. Um, the African food here is quite expensive because he has to, the person who owns it has to go to travel to London to get it. So you see, he's now adding on top of the landing cost mm -hmm. and his transportation. It's quite expensive here. And my husband is the type that does not like these foods. And he likes to eat in, in the house. So that's why we go there every week. Because his yam and his garden eggs and his local fish and everything. And the local chicken even. Even the chicken, you know. So we spend a lot there. Mm -hmm. So for a family of three, surprisingly, 600 pounds a month. Wow. And it's basically because we spend a lot of time, a lot of money in the African mm -hmm. market. We and don't even fresh. buy our rice. Yes, we don't even don't buy our fresh. rice from the normal. We go to either the Asian or the African, whatever to buy. And so many things, almost everything. Mm. The only things we buy from the normal are the biscuits, the drinks, the milk, no. you know. But the major things, and my husband eats in the house every single day of the week, unless we are we decide to eat out or buy out once in a while. And he takes food to work every day that he goes oh. to. So he takes his local food every day as well. So, mm, 600. All right. So basically, I feel like if you take away African food from the equation, most of us won't be spending so much on feeding because African food is where the bulk of the money goes in. So is because it's very expensive, right? Um, so for us, we're a family of five, just like Gloria. And we spend, from my budget, we spend about 600 to 800 pounds. Now, not every month. So let me say monthly, it would be around 600 pounds. But if we go to an African store, because we go once in three months, once every three months. So anytime we go to an African store, it's usually more because we spend not less than 200 pounds there every time we go to shop because we buy in bulk. Um, we go to Manchester, so we don't ha have the luxury of going there every... It's about 15 minutes drive from where we are. So we don't have the luxury of going there every day. And besides, buying in bulk is even better. So we go there once every three months, buy in bulk, and then 
that's it but any month that we don't go to african store we spend like 500 to 600 pounds on feeding mm -hmm. that's including eating in eating out everything five to six hundred but if it's the month that we go to an african store then it's up to 800 pounds i think we've listed the major bills that everybody would have to deal with if you're in the uk so gloria this is now the time everyone is waiting for so gloria what is the total of how much you spend every month living in the UK? My rough estimate, although when I did the math, pardon my math because it's terrible, I've added my gym membership, which everybody may not um, do. <laughs> but I just added it because I just thought I was going to, I don't know. But I added my gym membership and my uni scene, um, you know, union membership. Being a nurse, you have to join the union. So I pay £17 every month for that. And my gym membership, just because I do loads of classes, swim classes and all that, I pay about £40. So that's included <laughs> with all the bills. Of course, I eat a lot. So I have to lift weight. <laughs> that's included in all the bills. Rough estimate about 1819 every month. But don't forget, this is between myself and my husband. So it's going to differ if you're single, if you're a family of three, like I have children that are, that eat a lot and all that. So that's um, about one night. So for us, with everything averagely per month, we're looking at around 1,600, 1,650. Yes, average with everything inclusive. Okay, now listening to the total of what they both spend every month, I think you guys already know the winner. Because for me, we spend about two, five to three thousand pounds every month. Yeah. Anyway, it is, you know, um, insurance inclusive, so many debts we are paying, uh, um, black tax, everything, because we have to send money back home every month, right? Okay. We have responsibilities back at home. So all those things inclusive and um, we are paying for something else like school fees and everything. So. All that inclusive, we pay, we spend about two, five to three thousand pounds every month. Okay, now, so um, Gloria, now that we know that you don't spend so much living in Scotland, would you say Scotland is safe for family and children? Basically, what's the crime rate like in Scotland? I don't know the ratio, and it also depends on where you live in Scotland, right? If you're living in Edinburgh, like the city centre, you expect to have more crime rates because it's very busy, like everybody's there. Or like when you live in towns like where I am or where you live in the countryside. So, but generally speaking, you, you know how I advocate for Scotland, like Scottish people are just the best, like <laughs> the crime rate is not as high. They are lovely okay. people, like yes, that's it, generally. If you are watching us. Just pick your phone and go to Google <laughs> and Google how safe the golf was or how safe is Northern Ireland. And I'm very sure people will tell you that it's one of the safest places in the whole of Europe. In Europe. So, you choose. It's very, very safe. Obviously, there's time here, but um, it's, it's honestly very, very safe. You know, they have, they have a very bad history. There used to be war in this part of the UK. Very serious war that ended not long ago. There are even movies about it on Netflix. They're about the Protestants and the Catholics. There was so there was war here. And to date, like that place, I mean I remember when we moved here, we were trying to get a handyman to come and do a few things for us, fix this, fix that. And then he says, which part of Belfast? I says, we mentioned, I said, no, I'm a Catholic. I'm not supposed to go there. You, like, they have this kind of rivalry, the Catholics and the Protestants. Even the, at the care home, the, the old people with dementia. We see a, deme a, um, a dementia <laughs> patient or Catholic resident who does not see eye to eye with the Protestants. It's even in their old age where they, they've lost, like, their memory and stuff. There's still this thing there, but it's in the old days, it's in the past, and it's in the history. But because of that now, this place is so safe. They fought so hard for the peace of this place. So now this place is so safe. There is crime here, but it's nothing compared to the other parts of the UK. It's very, very safe, honestly. Very <laughs> good to raise kids here because of that. Very good. Um, for England, just like Gloria said earlier, it depends on the parts of England where you live, right? Some places are better than some places. So what I'll say is if you're planning to move to any part of England or any part of the UK, just make your research and find out how safe it is, especially for children. 
wherever you're going to move to that would help you for where i live i think it's pretty much um, okay so but obviously some places have higher crime rates so just do your research just to be on the safe side so instead of now going to do research why don't you just come to go <laughs> <laughs> so if you want a bubbly place where there are black people you know if a party person you want to see more people more africans and um, you know you just love to have it the african way then come to england but if you want the quiet life and um, easy life then you can consider another island and scotland because we obviously have more people this side <laughs> they are the lunars they are very lonely people over there <laughs> The community no, is getting no, bigger and bigger. It's easy. getting bigger, like the students. Uh, I think the people students, yes, only yes. my church right now, there are more than 20 African people that walked up to me within the past two months and said they know me from social media. Like more than 20 new families joined my church, only my church. Within one yes. month. You make them laugh because in England it is about 100. <laughs> 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 and this is the way you're talking about I was trying to get a point. <laughs> Finally, for job opportunities, I know that England has this one because obviously there are more jobs here. But for Northern Ireland and Scotland, who do you say there are jobs for people, who, especially for students and dependents who plan to move there? For me, if you're not looking for white collar job as per se, yes, you will definitely find something. But if you're looking for the white collar job, you know, you're thinking about living in Edinburgh or Aberdeen or big cities where there are universities, or otherwise, I'll give it to England. But yeah, generally, jobs, yes, but depend on the kind of job you want. I think it's same for Northern Ireland as well. I think it's same. Um, if you're a student and then you're looking for a part time job, obviously, the care industry, like most of our carers, the carers in my the facility where I work as students, you know. They are here at the university and then they are helping us part time. So it's easy. The care industry or all these fast food, you know, the, the KLCs and the McDonald's, you can work with them. Those ones are very, very easy to get. And they are always, they always need people. Um, but like like Gloria said, if you're looking for like quite color jobs, um, in this place, it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be quite difficult. It'll be quite difficult. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. So please, if you need a good job, just come to England. Don't bother going to Belfast or... Not well, before, Thank before you continue, that being said, you have you for nurses, have you seen the salary difference with Scotland? I really had it. Somebody called me last yesterday, I'm like she's moving to Scotland because the salary we are already higher. NHS, we're already here. Every yeah, other and, place and, is yeah. called in the UK and just down here. So you can consider that your income is going to help you too. <laughs> there are so many private um, health health institutions here that pay so well so why bother yeah. <laughs> anyways guys um you've heard for yourself you've seen everything there's no point calling the results you know the winner already so decide for yourself where you would love to move to you guys have watched it right facts speak for itself so just decide i don't that's all i would say so just decide where you would love to move to from everything you've heard today we've placed everything on the table for you guys you are now the one to make your choice make the decision as to where you would love to move to so having said that we've come to the end of today's video thank you guys so much for watching nanel is here on youtube you guys you guys already know her anyways and gloria is on youtube as well you guys visit those ones these beautiful ladies and show them love all right Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Bye.